Well, this is all about the gods and goddesses of olden times who lived up on top of Mount Olympus. And honestly, what goes on up there is nobody's business. Suffice it to say that the orders of the day are rape and petty larceny, and that they are brought to a pitch of perfection never reached before or since. First of all, you get Venus, goddess of pleasure, mistress of laughter, and patroness of all good time girls. Compare the Latin word crustula, meaning a pie or an old tart. She was also queen of love, which she invented one afternoon quite by accident. This Venus appeared ready-made and ready-undressed in a big scallop shell just off the island of Cyprus. And her motto throughout a long and very active career was semper parata, or always at the ready. Next we come to Minerva, goddess of wisdom, warfare and all the liberal arts. She was produced direct from Jupiter's brain without the agency of a mother, which as you know is very unusual. Old Jupiter woke up one morning with a nasty headache, dolor capitis. So he sent old Mercury to fetch Vulcan from his underground workshop and he says, tell him to bring his hammer up with him. So this Vulcan come up from his workshop and he said, hello, Jupe. He says, I'm sorry, you're queer. He says, where do you feel it? And old Jupiter says, he get to buy queen. Hink eli lacrimi. So Vulcan says, all right, hold up. And he give him a fortney one right over the dominant. And his head opened up and out stepped Minerva, fully grown, fully dressed and fully armed, ready to take her place on the town council. Next, we come to Hercules heavyweight champion of the Peloponnesus for a number of years until Castor and Pollux got a decision over him on a point of order, Apex Ordinus. This Hercules had a wonderful left lead, Sinister Princeps, but he was inclined to it rather low, Humilis. His motto was Nel illegitimi carborundum, or don't let the so-and-sos grind you down. The twelve labours of Hercules, the duodecim laboris, are very well known. The most important of these consisted in slaying a savage lion that was ravaging the outskirts of a place called Thespis. So the old duke of this borough, who had 50 daughters, they did things in a big way in those days, was so grateful when this lion was dead that he invited Hercules down for a long weekend, longer fragilis finis. Anyhow, in the end, old Hercules stayed for 50 days, during which time he managed to present each one of these daughters with a little facsimile. Funnily enough, this is not considered sufficiently important to include in the regulation 12 labours, but there you are, you see, ideas on great deeds differ from age to age. Quot homines tot potentii, as Virgil says. Well, last but not least, we come to old Jupiter himself. Now, he's the ringleader, Dux Orbis. This Jupiter, after rather a shaky start, a tremolo in itio, during which his security was threatened by the rebellion of the giants, Rebellio Gigantorum, finally settled down and gave himself up to the pursuit of pleasure. Now the Latin has three words for pleasure, delectatio, voluptas, and libido. And I'm afraid it was the last of these three to which his old nibs devoted himself, because we read that he became a veritable Proteus in order to, well, in order to. This brings us directly on to the practice of metamorphosis, the art of changing yourself into something else in order to get round the women. And once again, the Latin has three words for woman, poella, a young woman, matrona, a married woman, usually rather on the large side, and malia, just an ordinary woman, besides more rare and specialised words like Virgo, of course. Anyway, we find this Jupiter introducing himself into the bed of a young lady named Danai, disguised as a shower of gold. <laughs> Hark at him. <laughs> Then he appeared to lead her in the form of a swan. He comes sailing up for some breadcrumbs one morning. Then he visited Europa in the shape of a bull. And finally he paid a visit to Alcmena while her husband Amphitryon was away doing a locum and presented them with a little fait accompli or non sequitur as it's called in the Latin. Later on in life old Jupiter had to curtail his amorous activities a bit because he began to put on weight, casus belly. But his motto throughout his more active years was ask longer vita brevis or life is short so don't drag along behind.